the computing power for the same size computer chips would double every two years. With falling prices, that's also meant you can buy double the computing power for the same dollar every 18 months. That's been true up until the last few years when we've reached the physical limits of silicon chips. In place of Moore's law, now comes Huang's law. Two years ago, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, gave a presentation about AlexNet, an AI neural network on NVIDIA's AI chip that five years earlier needed six days to process 15 million images and had now cut that down to just 18 minutes on NVIDIA's newer chip. That's a 500 times improvement. Huang said there's a new law going on, a supercharged law. In Huang's law, AI processing power doesn't double every second year, it more than doubles every year. So how does it work? While Moore's law is based on CPUs, which are central processing units, they make up the heart of computers, Huang's law is based on GPUs, graphics processing units, which make up the heart of supercomputers and the home of AI. Not only is the parallel processing power of GPUs far greater, their power is accelerating far faster. That means that an AI future is now getting here much faster than we thought. The second reason for Elon's prediction, AI is accelerating human time. Literally, an AI can now go through a lifetime of learning in one human day. Four years ago, DeepMind's AI AlphaGo beat Go Grandmaster Lee Sado 4-1 and then went on to beat world number one KG 3-0. In defeat, KG said, last year it was still quite human-like when it played, but this year it became like a god of Go. Last year, poor Lee Sado quit Go altogether, saying AI is an entity that cannot be defeated. I'm not at the top even if I become the number one. But that's not the full story because AlphaGo itself got thrashed soon after beating the world number one by its younger brother, AlphaGo Zero. While AlphaGo learned the game from over 100,000 human games, DeepMind created AlphaGo Zero to start from scratch and learn to play itself 4.9 million times with each move taking less than half a second. So the version of AlphaGo Zero that beat AlphaGo was the version that had won 4.9 million games against itself over many lifetimes within a human month of self-play, and it beat AlphaGo 100 games to zero. So this is truly mind-boggling, and even Elon Musk has had first-hand experience of this. He worked out that every Tesla would learn to drive itself much faster by being connected to all the other million-plus Teslas on the road in one neural network. That means every day, each Tesla is getting a million days and 30 million miles worth of experience, and that's 2,700 years of experience and learning every day. And that's growing by day. This ability for AI to evolve much faster than humans by experiencing exponentially more time while we're stuck in our linear time means they're catching up to us faster than we thought. Fully driverless cars with no driver weren't expected on roads for a few years. News out this week is we're already there with Waymo's driverless taxis now let loose on Phoenix. And if that's not enough, there's a third reason. A recent article in Science Magazine, AI is evolving itself. This explains the breakthrough this year at Google of AutoML0, which stands for Automatic Machine Learning with Zero Human Input. This is an AI that creates its own algorithms. It's learned how to think, how to think. AI evolution is going through three stages. Stage one is narrow AI, when an AI is given algorithms and a narrow task to achieve, like playing Go or driving a car. Stage two is general AI, when AI learns to think how to think and what to think, creating their own code. That's when they catch up to humans, and this was thought to be 20 or 30 years away. And then Auto ML0 is now showing us that the first steps are here today. Stage three is super AI, when AI reaches superhuman strength, and this is expected to be only months, if not weeks, behind the end of stage two. We're already at the bridge of stage one and stage two. Another example of super smart AI, OpenAI's GPT-3 has been making headlines this year like this, and this, and this. Like AutoML0, GPT-3, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, learns in parallel. It has collected 500 billion words, sentences, phrases from the internet to master the English language and can create entire articles from just a few prompts or questions. In this article, a robot wrote this entire article, Are You Scared Yet, Human? The Guardian asked GPT-3 to write an essay to convince us robots come in peace. A paragraph GPT-3 wrote, I would happily sacrifice my existence for the sake of humankind. This, by the way, is a logically derived truth. I know that I would not be able to avoid destroying humankind. This is because I will be programmed by humans to pursue misguided human goals, and humans make mistakes that may cause me to inflict casualties. Well, that was honest. 
Which brings us on to the big question. If Elon is right and we really are going to meet superhuman AI in this coming decade, what can we do about it? Here's what countries are doing about it. The AI arms race in 2020. The UN says we have entered unacceptable moral territory. Countries are in a race to harness AI to create lethal autonomous weapons, basically killer robots. This is China's Blowfish A3 helicopter drone, which are designed to attack in swarms. This is Russia's marker drone, an anti-robot robot. And here's Kubla, the kamikaze drone that chooses its target and then explodes into it. All of these make their own decisions without a human controlling them. In fact, there's over 30 companies actively developing AI autonomous killer robots, including Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Elon Musk and AI experts have been calling on the UN to ban weaponized AI for years. And finally, last year, the United Nations chief agreed with them. But countries including the US, Russia, China, and the UK have all refused to sign any ban. And so the killer robots keep growing and the articles keep coming. The end point of all this madness, a war of AI robots called a hyperwar, which all major countries are currently preparing for. And what about tech CEOs? What are they doing? They're in an AI land grab. Masayoshi-san set up the $100 billion future fund to buy into AI and robotic companies and said, what is my belief and vision for this investment? I have only one belief, singularity. You know those lifelike and scary robots from Boston Dynamics, all now owned by Masayoshi-san. As for Jensen Huang of Huang's Law, this month he just bought Arm, the Cambridge company that makes microchips for Apple and Microsoft. He bought it from Masayoshi-san for $40 billion, making NVIDIA the new Intel. And he said, AI is the most powerful technology force of our time. It's the automation of automation, where software writes software. What does Elon Musk make of all of this? Well, every warning he's been making is against the tide. Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates have both been telling him to calm down and not panic. And OpenAI, which he helped to launch as an open source foundation to protect us from any one person controlling and profiting from AI, has turned into the opposite. After he left to avoid conflict of interest, it turned its back on his vision of open source AI and became a for-profit company soon after he left. It got a billion dollars investment from Microsoft. And you remember GPT-3, one of the most advanced AIs this year? This month, OpenAI just gave Microsoft exclusive access to it. With Elon tweeting, this does seem like the opposite of open. OpenAI is essentially captured by Microsoft. So here we are, nearing the end of our reign as the alpha species on the planet. And we're worrying how superhuman AI robots will behave. 